Hello, welcome to retrieval practice number one. This is something that we're going to do this session. And what it is, is um, having to work with information that you just receive. And uh, studies show that if you start to work with things rather than being passive, so if you're active when you listen or active when you read, that you remember things better. So the first one that we're going to do is um, about plagiarism and how to avoid plagiarism. We're going to watch a video. And what you're going to do is um, right now get uh, something to write on and something to write with. And so pause the video and get yourself set up so you can do this retrieval practice exercise. And at the end, you'll submit what you, um, your answers to the question. So go ahead and pause the video and set yourself up. Okay, so now that you have your paper, go ahead and write retrieval practice number one at the top of your page. And I want you to number the questions. So you're going to have a total of five questions here. And um, so you're going to, we'll watch the video, have you listen to the question, and then pause the video and answer it from your memory, hopefully. Um, write the answer in your notebook, and then press play to see the answer. So the idea is to answer it, of course, before you see the answers. And then give yourself one point if your answer is correct. So let's go to the video first thing. And um, let me go just a second here. Okay, so here we are. Um, and so we'll begin listening. This is Grand Theft Info. Not Grand Theft Auto, but Info, as in information. In this lesson, we're going to find out how to avoid being accused of something called plagiarism. Plagiarism is a serious offense because it's stealing, it's theft. Plagiarism is where you take someone else's words from a book or a website or some other resource, and you decide to try to pass them off as your own words in a school assignment. It's easy to do because most of us know how to copy and paste. But just because it's easy to do doesn't mean that you can or should do it. In fact, in many schools, there are severe punishments for plagiarism. In colleges and universities, you'll find yourself kicked out. And by the way, they keep your money. Okay, so the first question, so number one, is um, what are some results, what are two effects that the video just mentioned if you plagiarize? So two effects of plagiarism. Go ahead and pause the video and answer the question. So two effects of plagiarism. You don't have to write complete sentences. So if you said something like um, you get kicked out or uh, you fail or get a zero grade or you don't, you get kicked out and don't get your money back, those would be correct answers. So if you have any of those two, give yourself one point for question one. All right, so let's continue. What exactly is plagiarism, you're wondering? Well, according to a book called The Instrument of Student Judicial Governance, plagiarism is defined as <clears throat> 
The deliberate or reckless representation of another's words, thoughts, or ideas as one's own without attribution in connection with submission of academic work, whether graded or otherwise. Did you get all that? How about we put it into layman's terms? It simply means that you're stealing someone else's work and trying to pass it off as yours. It might not be as severe as committing armed robbery at a bank or a convenience store, but it's still very, very, very serious. Plagiarism is where you write something almost word for word, also known as verbatim, and try to make your teacher think that it's your writing. Okay, so question number two. Give a definition of plagiarism. So give your own definition of plagiarism. So go ahead and pause the video, write your answer, and then you can start again. So if you wrote something like um, writing another person's ideas word for word and trying to make your teacher think it's your writing or anything like that, give yourself a point. Okay, now we can skip ahead a little bit here. Okay, let's see. From. It may seem hard to believe, but plagiarism really is theft. Instead of stealing a laptop, an iPad, a cell phone, a PlayStation, or an Xbox, you're stealing the words that someone else took the time to write. You might be thinking to yourself, but it's easy to do. Yes, that is true. It is very easy. It's true that you can find essays and reports on the internet for free. That doesn't make it right to take them and use them as your own. You can also buy essays and reports on the internet. But just because you're paying for it doesn't mean that you may plagiarize. Let's pretend that you forgot to do your homework and you decided to borrow something from a friend, an essay or a report. Well, if you copy something that they've already written to turn in for a grade, that's also plagiarism if you decide to recopy it and hand it in as your own. But what if I hand copy it from a book, you wonder? Nope. That's still plagiarism. The easiest way to avoid plagiarism is to ask yourself, does the information that's in front of you need credit? Okay, so now number three, what are some examples that the, um, the author just gave of plagiarism? Write three examples. Stop the video and then start again when you have the answers written down. Okay, so I have three maybe buy papers, online, uh, copy from a friend, copy from a book. Um, he also said buy book reports. So if you have any of those three, give yourself a point. Okay, let's continue. There are four easy areas to figure this out. Number one, if the words or the ideas that you're using came from a magazine, a book, a newspaper, a song, a TV show, a movie, a website, a game, an email, or an advertisement, you need to give credit. If the information that you're using came from an interview or a conversation, believe it or not, you need to give credit for it. Third, if you use exact words, if you write verbatim, meaning word for word, you need to use quotation marks. You also need to tell the teacher where it came from. Not Grand Theft Auto, but info. As Sorry, I skipped. All right, so the question here is, um, what sources do you need to credit? So just list three sources that you need to credit if you use the exact words. Go ahead and pause your video.
Okay, that was an easy one. All the answers are here. So you need to credit any ideas that are not your own, um, including some of these like songs, games, emails, advertisements. So if you use the exact words, you need to give credit. Exact words, if you write verbatim, meaning word for word, you need to use quotation marks. You also need to tell the teacher where it came from. Finally, if you use a chart, a drawing, or a photo, make sure that you give credit for that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna jump ahead again. to list it. Three things to remember when it comes to plagiarism is this. Number one, if you go word for word, if you go verbatim, make sure that you use quotation marks. Number two, paraphrasing is using your own words. Make sure that you do that. And number three, possibly most importantly, make sure that you tell your teacher where the information came from. You should be using both in-text citations and a works cited page. We talk about those in another video. It is possible to not have to list something. Suppose you were using something that's known as common knowledge. That's where you wouldn't really have to give credit for something. As an example, if you stated that the United States flag has 50 stars on it, you really shouldn't have to tell your teacher where you found that. That's something that everyone should know. But if it's something that's not common knowledge, make sure that you tell your teacher where it came from. Okay, so the last question, number five, is um, a true-false question. So here's the statement. You need to cite the source for information that is common knowledge. So true or false? You need to cite the source for information that is common knowledge. Okay, and that answer is false. If it's common knowledge, if everyone knows it, then you don't need to cite it. You don't need to tell people where it came from. The example was this, the flag of the US has 50 stars, everyone knows that. So let's take a look, I have a bonus question for you. And the question, is what is funny about this title? So humor is a little bit hard to explain sometimes. This is Grand Theft Info. It's from a book or a website. Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulties here. So what is funny about Grand Theft Info. See if you can explain the joke. And that will be a bonus question. You could put that in as number six and we'll talk about the answer tomorrow. And so let me go back, give you some instructions now. And you can complete the assignment. So we finished that. So you're gonna tally your score we had five questions, there's five points. So you're going to go to Canvas, and by now you should be signed up, you should have finished Jen's workshop, and you'll see an announcement that says um, retrieval practice number one, right on the home page. And go ahead, in that announcement, you should have a link to the assignment, and you can just submit a photo of your notes and your score. In, you can just put your score in the comments section of that assignment. And then tomorrow I'll shout out the high scores. So um, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will put a link on the announcement to the entire video because I did leave some parts out that you might be interested in. So thanks again.